is a flip video about counting atoms and taking inventory. Taking inventory is just another way of saying counting things. So let's take a look at my reaction scene here. So if you remember, the things on the left-hand side are called reactants, as we learned. And the things on the left-hand side are called products. So if these are my reactants, a purple sphere, a blue sphere, and a purple. So we'll say purple atoms and a blue atom. And these are also my reactants, two red atoms. So this compound is reacting with this molecule right here. To produce, well, let's say when the reaction is done, this is what I see. Okay? If these are my products, hopefully you've noticed that all that happened were my reactants reacted together, rearranged, and formed new looking partners. That's exactly what a reaction is. And so when we want to count the atoms, they need to be conserved. Remember learning about the law of conservation of matter? Nothing should be created or destroyed. Meaning, if I have two um, purple atoms on this side, somewhere in my products I shall have two purple atoms. And I do. Doesn't matter where they are or how they're paired up. And if I had one blue atom, I should have one blue atom on my product side. And if I had two red atoms, I should have two red atoms on my product side. So a reaction has taken place because new things got formed, but if you notice, no atoms were lost and none were gained. That's exactly what you need to keep in mind as we learn how to balance in this chapter. But as of right now, we are just taking inventory. So let's bring back our reaction scene here, and let's take some inventory, okay? How many red atoms did you see on the left-hand side? Hopefully you said one, two atoms. How many red do you see on the right-hand side? One, two atoms. Good. How many blue do you see on the left-hand side? One atom. How many blue on the right hand? One. How many purple? Two atoms. How many purple? Two atoms. So now the question is, did I conserve matter? Did we conserve matter? Is this equation balanced is another way of saying it. Balanced means we conserved matter. Well, let's see. Two red, two red. One blue, one blue. Two purple, two red. So on the left-hand side, when I was done reacting, my products all had the same number of atoms. So matter was conserved, therefore it's balanced. Okay, now, instead of these pictures, let's go ahead and take a look at some reactions like you'll see in class. This is a, called a chemical equation, if you've been learning. Left-hand side are the reactants, right-hand side are the products. These react to make that. Is this balanced? So, so far you don't have to know how to balance it. You just have to answer, is this balanced, and take inventory. So, if you noticed in my last example, I made what's called an inventory chart. You will be asked to do this in class. On the left-hand side, known as my reactants, and my right-hand side, I've created a chart. Down the middle goes all of your elements or your atoms. I have magnesiums and I have oxygen. So on the left-hand side, I have one magnesium. On the right-hand side, I have one magnesium. On the left-hand side, I have two oxygen. Don't forget, that little two means I have two of them. On the right-hand side, I have one oxygen. Remember, even though it doesn't say one, the one is invisible. So, is matter conserved? Did we conserve matter? Meaning, everything that I had on this side, is it equal to everything on the right-hand side? Another way of saying that is, is this equation balanced? And the answer is no. Because, though I conserved my magnesium, my oxygen didn't get conserved. What happened to my oxygen? Remember, matter cannot be created, nor can it be destroyed. So this would need to be fixed, which is going to be our next unit about how to balance. Right now, we're just answering yes or no. Okay, and let's do our last one. So if you notice, counting atoms is the main point of this. Okay, that's your first step. All right, now I've got aluminum sulfate reacting with calcium hydroxide, 
and on this side I have aluminum hydroxide and calcium sulfate. So you don't have to know how to write this, you just have to copy it down in your notes right now. So take a second and copy this down. Make sure you remember all the subscripts and the coefficients, and don't forget where you see parentheses. You copy it word for word or letter for letter and number for let number. Okay, let's make an inventory chart. All right, good. So if I'm going to make my inventory chart, I could do the following. Put every single element I see in here. I see calcium, so I see aluminum, I see sulfur, I see oxygen, I see calcium. I already have oxygen, I see hydrogen. I see aluminum, I see oxygen, I see hydrogen, I already have that, calcium, sulfur, oxygen. And take count for each atom, okay? I could do it that way, so let's go ahead and start. Two aluminum, don't forget, this big two means that there's two aluminum here. Remember when we first learned how to count atoms in the earlier chapters? There's two aluminum here. How many sulfurs? This three gets distributed. Three sulfurs. Let's see. Three sulfurs. The big three in the front gets distributed. Four times three. Twelve oxygens here. So I've got twelve oxygens here. And then I've got two oxygens here times three. So three times two is six. So I have twelve and six on this side. So that's 18. And how about on this side? I have three oxygens here and two here. So two times three is six. And then I have four and three, which is 12. So I also have 18. Okay, going on. Three calciums, three calciums. How many hydrogens? I have two hydrogens seen here times three. So three times two is six hydrogens. I have three hydrogens seen here times two, six hydrogens here. Two, two, three, three, 18, 18, three, three, six, six. Is this balanced? The answer is yes. Now, there was a slightly easier way to do this. So let me show you. I could have made an inventory chart that looks like this. It has aluminum, but then it has this sulfate group. And the reason why I could chunk this together as a group is because I see another one here that matches it exactly. If I see an exact match, then I can balance the matches. I see a calcium, calcium. Now here's another group. I see a hydroxide and I see an exact match hydroxide on this side. So how many aluminums do I have? Two. How many aluminums? Two. How many of these SO4 groups do I have? Three groups. How many of these SO4 groups, don't forget, the big three in the front distributes three of those big groups. How many calcium? Three. How many calcium? Three. Now how many of these OH groups? I've got two here, but then I've got three times as many, so three times two is six. How many of these hydroxide groups? I have three here, three of these OHs, but I have twice as many. Three times two is six. Two, two, three, three. Three, three, six, six, it's balanced. So as long as you get them to match up, you've balanced them, okay? Take some time and go over that one again. You might wanna pause it and ask yourself if you can do it. You don't have to know how to balance them yet. You just have to be able to make this chart and say yes or no if it's balanced.